The whole area has been gentrified. And I have no objection if the council wants to build some luxury housing around this area, as long as they don't do it on some place space or some open ground, so that rich people can move in. We're not going to object to that. But we don't want a situation where ordinary local residents are moved out to make way for them. That's the sort of cleansing of the borough that the Tories seek. Now you have to talk about a better social mix. That means less of you and more rich publishers from the city of London with more money than cents. That's not the sort of city that works. That's a city that's divided, rigorously divided, and one in which the poorest people end up living an appalling quality of life in, as Andy described that, if somebody comes along from this council and says, oh, well, don't worry, we'll move you somewhere new, you go and see what they're offering compared to the size of what you've currently got, because they're not building good property, they're not building property, good gardens for people to rent, it will be flatted accommodation, smaller than you currently have. So fight this all the way. Don't make the mistake of being cleansed out the area like the ordinary working class families were in Wandsworth and Westminster. And I have to say, if you think we're just being too alarmist here, look at the role of Boris Johnson. And I'm mentioning Boris because I'll be back in two years for your vote to get the bug out, so I'm running again. <laughs> the last big thing I managed to do before we lost was persuade the government to make the Mayor of London have overall responsibility for housing on big schemes. And so any scheme that's about more than 150 new homes, the mayor can decide whether it's right or fair. And we also got Gordon Brown to give five billion pounds to the mayor of London to spend over the three years from 2008 to 2011 which was enough money to build 50,000 affordable homes, mainly for rent, and that hasn't happened. Boris Johnson spent the first year not building new homes, but arguing with the government, said we don't want homes for rent, we want to build homes for sale, and he said we want to build homes for sale for families with £70,000 a year income. Now, how many people in this room of a family income of 70,000 pounds. How many people in London? One in 20. What, does a, what do you want a council building programme for if it's only the top 5% of people in terms of earners can access it? I mean, the reality is MPs will only just bloody qualify for it. I mean, it's an absolutely ridiculous situation. And what's happened? Instead of 50,000 homes being built, by this time next year, we'll be lucky if 30,000 have been built. A huge opportunity lost. So it is not a one-off spasm. I know you've got Harry Phipps out there. He's a rather gawky, odd-looking one. A Tory councillor. I knew him when he was 15 years old, back in 1984, because he followed me around. He was my stalker. Wherever I went during a meeting about don't abolish the GLC, Harry Phipps would be in the audience, and he always had the same question. Why don't you privatise the fire brigade? That's a really good idea, isn't it? Instead of you have a fire and the fire brigade turns up and puts it out, you take out private insurance and they put it out if you're insured. Otherwise, the bloody place would burn down. Now, I tell you, that's the sort of mad people you've got running out of at the moment. So the idea they're going to be building homes for all the borough, for all the residents, middle class and working class, is nonsense. And then if any of you are taken in by this, let me tell you, Lady Porter spent 15 years telling local residents in Westminster and then three British courts that none of this was true. They wouldn't think of doing anything like that. But all my entire political career, I found myself fighting. Tory councils that don't want to build homes for rent for ordinary families. They want a borough which is just built with home owners, nobody else. And a, a city can't work like that. And you know, I say to I say to Harry Phipps if he came in, suppose you achieve your objective. Suppose after ten years, everyone on my city in the surrounding states has gone. And they're all nice 
middle class estates, homes, 300, 350,000 people, filled with solicitors, filled you know, with TV producers, businessmen and so on. Who will do the things that make the city work? Because when you go into a hospital to have a surgery, yes, you need a good surgeon to save your life. But you need somebody to clean that ward so you don't get an infection. If you want to live in a city that works, you may be incredibly rich. You may have a bloody Chelsea tractor and afford to pay the congestion charges you swam through central London. But for the city to work, you need someone to drive the buses. And the people that make the city work, the city ain't going to work if they haven't got somewhere to live. Or if they're all moved to the, you know, the far reaches of Barking or the outskirts of London, displaced from the centre. A city is great when it represents all its people. What we've got here is a borough that isn't representing its people. And you need not just to elect Andy on Thursday, but to get that Labour Council back. Let's get back to having a Labour Council that puts all the interests of all the peoples of the borough in, in its sights. It isn't just concerned about one class or one group that just votes for it. So I'm not saying vote for Andy, I'm saying vote for Andy and vote for a Labour count, three Labour councillors in each of your wards so that Andy can work with a Labour council to try and stop and turn around these policies and start building homes for all. And then I'll tell you this, I'll be back in two to say, and vote for me from there again so I can work with a Labour council in Hammersmith and Andy Slaughter, that we pour the sort of resources into building that we should be seeing. One final point to make in all of this, a slightly off the subject of housing, but it's the question some of you may be tempted to vote for the Lib Dems. Because I know there's that nice Mr. Clegg, that's a sort of clean young man, you wouldn't mind your daughter bringing you home, nor one of that. But the question is, what do you get? This, this seat is a straightforward fight between Labour and Conservative. There are seats. If I was down in Richmond, where the Labour vote is about 6%, and as a Liberal MP, who do I agree with on a lot of things? I'd actually say, oh, I, I'm, I'm mostly vote Liberal myself to keep the Tory out. But that isn't the choice you've got here, or in the neighbouring boroughs. In this area, it's Labour or it's Conservative. And so however nice Mr. Clegg seemed to be, and anyhow, even if you did get it for Lip here, you might then find Clegg's going to do a deal with the choice, you'll get Cameron in anyhow. And if you think Cameron looks another nice, polite young man, that may well be the case, all touchy-feely. Look at the Tories behind. The Tory party hasn't changed. But it has actually, it's got worse. They all think Mrs. Sancho was a bit bloody soft. So they have Cameron up there emoting, hugging a hoodie, going with us, he's up to the North Pole, saying we should be nice to each other. But the Tory party has been trended. Now, they have King Clark, they like a rare gold to reassure you. I mean, they are all the hard-nosed, hard-faced young men and women who've done very well out of the abuses in the City of London and the financial sector. They're people who don't believe the state should have a role in providing the things they like, and it can all be done by the market. I know every politician comes on every election. It's the most important election since the last one, by well, 30 years or whatever. But this really is. If anyone's tempted to think, well, waste a vote on the Liberals, I have to say this. We get a Clegg a, a Cameron government, or Cameron government, we'll be back here in six months, Huge fights going on because if you think Hammersmith Council's been bad since the Tories got control of it, a Tory controlled council backed by a Tory government will change the quality and nature of your lives and your children and your grandchildren's prospects. And it will take a generation, even when we get them out in five years, it'll take a generation to reverse the damage they've done. So I don't have the slightest sense, vote for this man but vote for the Labour councillors here as well. Let's start building this city that is for all its people, not just the bloody rich ones. Thank you very much.